I guess I started hearing about Jeb's choke tubes, I don't know, seven or eight years ago from uh, Kevin Beavers and Brandon Johnson who live there in Fayette County, kind of close by to us. And um, I remember Kevin said, man, you really need to check these guys out. Like their choke tubes are legit and um, they're the real deal. He said, I know there's a lot of gimmicks out there, a lot of people doing the same stuff. He's like, there's, there's something to what they're doing. He said, it's amazing how well it shoots in my gun. And then I guess from there, I met Mr. Bobby and Trey, um, probably at NWTF for the first time. And we kind of got to know each other there across a couple years. We were participated, both of us, in the Drake Field Expert Program and stuff. And um, just about from earliest time I met Trey, he, he was, pestering and pestering, come on down here to South Georgia and turkey hunt with us. And, you know, a lot of people offer invitations that are really gracious like that, and I, I didn't really know, you know, whether I should take him up on it or what their turkey hunt was like. Well, finally this year, I was talking to Dylan and just said, I don't know, why not? Let's go to South Georgia, let's see what it's all about. And um, it's well worth the drive. We here. It's under the <laughs> There's Spencer Halperman. What's happening? How you doing? How you cheering doing? Good, good. Who is that in the trunk with that? Oh, that's that. You got Instagram guy, Dylan. <laughs> that's it. That's him. So it was a little bit cloudy, and um, and we 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 stayed pretty close to the truck to listen there right at first light just because we weren't sure exactly where they were going to be roosted. It could have been one or two or three places, and there was kind of a creek that ran through there. And so based on where they gobbled, it was going to kind of depend on how we got to them. Um, and so we were waiting kind of from the truck to decide exactly how we were going to get around to them. Well, when they gobbled, it was it was a little after 7, and it was pretty – I mean, they, they didn't gobble early, so it was pretty close to fly down. And by the time we could kind of get in position, they'd clearly pitch down, hear the difference in their gobble. And uh, – we got to the edge of this cutover and they were out in the cutover. We'd kind of been in the swamps. So we were coming up a ridge, just a, just a, we were in a low depression and coming up onto this cutover where, where the birds were gobbling. And um, Mr. Bobby said, I, I think this is going to be our only tree. And I mean, it, it did the job, but it was definitely not an ideal tree for hiding everybody because me and Mr. Bobby are sitting side by side and Dylan was kind of right behind us on his knees and, um, I mean, we, we really weren't hid. It was just literally the only place that we could sit down. And so I started crawling out to put the decoys out and I didn't get 10 feet from our tree. And he gobbled and I mean, he couldn't have been past 75 yards. And there was kind of a, uh, a pushed up like a berm, um, a, a windrow, I guess is what they call it, of just the, the trash from where they logged that, that uh, cut over. And I guess he was just right behind it. How he didn't see me, I don't know, but um, when he gobbled, he was very close and he was clearly coming. So I kind of crawled on out another, maybe, I don't know, six or eight feet. So it, it, we weren't even a full 15 yards. The decoys weren't from us, but we got him in the ground. I got him in the ground and uh, kind of hightailed it back and got in this weird spot in between these two trees. But again, it was all we had. And uh, Mr. Bobby said, why don't you yelp at him one time? So I yelped and man, all four of them cut me off. I mean, just about third yelp and uh and they were clearly facing us clearly fired up so i cut just real quick and then yelped one more time and man they were coming on the string and just textbook came right around the end of that berm walked right into the decoy and uh gave both of us just a, an awesome shot
I don't, I guess this was a hen right here. Was it? It was full of gobbler. It was full of gobbler. Well, one of them got right here in between these two piles and was just looking. this way. Oh, okay. I heard him gobble and I looked in front of Mr. Bobby said, I got the strutter. The one to the left of the strutter, he just had his head up tall and I thought, I thought I might as well saw him down. Yeah, I could see him stretch on the shoot. Wasn't ready. I wasn't fixing to shoot, but it shot. But it was okay, it worked out. I heard you say, I got the strutter, and I said, perfect. <laughs> I knew you was going to shoot the them, one with yeah. the them two, Them two stepped out to the left, and I thought, there ain't no reason to shoot the one on the front. Heavy. So we hadn't even been there 30 minutes, and bam, bam, we've got two dead turkeys on the ground, big ones. I mean, frankly, I, the one I killed was just, I guess, by luck, but I mean, probably the biggest Eastern I've ever killed. Giant spurs, great big old beard, heavy turkeys. Before we could even take a picture, Pender and Lovey are kind of on the other side of this swamp, probably a half a mile away, but just a body of water between us and them. Bam, we hear them shoot. They fire up the text message. We got three turkeys dead, it's been 30 minutes. And I mean, as if our hunt was not textbook enough, <laughs> by the time we even talked to them, theirs was just exactly, basically exactly the same. Birds flew down, marched right up a big logging road, big strutter, comes right into the decoy, bumps it, you know, does his deal. Starts to walk off, Pender yelps, he raises his head, deal's done. So we're pretty fired up. I mean, we hadn't been hunting in South Georgia 30 minutes total, and we've got three dead gobblers on the ground. And uh, the rest of the day to just kind of hang out and chill, pressure's off at this point. I'd say that's a good turkey. Oh, hey, in 2011, me and Jimmy just in our head. Hey, in 2011, 12, 13, 40 divisions, we be sitting there just doing our best doing something like that. Hey, what time is it? 8 o'clock? I guess that evening at dinner time, we were talking about what we were going to do the next day, and uh, and Mr. Bobby said, "Boy, these turkeys are acting right." And when y'all leave, I'm gonna have to take Miss Cindy. That's his girlfriend. He said she'd never been before, and frankly, I think he said she'd never even heard a gobble. And so I looked at him. I said, "Mr. Bobby, let's take her tomorrow. Every one of us killed plenty of turkeys." And um, he said, would you want to do that? And I said, yeah, we got two camera guys here. And this is, I mean, they are, they're burning up. The weather's beautiful. We know where they're at. Let's take her in the morning. And uh, so he called her. She was off work the next day. And uh, we decided we'd slide into a, to a different block, kind of on the same farm, but further to the west. And there's a block, big block of mature pines. Um, we'd seen some sign in there that afternoon. And uh, so we started in there first thing in the morning um, with Miss Cindy. Not too much. All right, here we go. Gotta get Miss Cindy a turkey this morning. Mr. Bobby says she's never been. So. When, when we got there, um, it was real windy, and in pines, especially when it's real windy, it's just kind of a lot of noise, and, and you can hardly hear. Um, and so we were struggling to hear a gobble at all, and then when we did hear the gobble, we were really struggling to kind of pinpoint where it was because there were two or three logging roads that, that went through there. And when we finally kind of pinpointed where they were, we realized we had a long walk. Um, so we had to cover probably five or 600 yards to get in the game. And when we, by the time we got to where we wanted to set up, he was on the ground. And not only was he on the ground, he was kind of going the other way. This logging road kind of made, wrapped around this block of woods. And, and, uh, and so we had to kind of call him back to us. And as soon as we set up and yelped, they gobbled. Um, and we, best we can tell, it was either four or five of them. They gobbled good. But they kind of, you could tell that they were definitely heading away from us. We really thought we had, uh, we kind of missed the boat uh, because we were behind them. Uh, after 15 or 20 minutes, of calling and just kind of being aggressive with it and pushing them a little, probably too hard. One of them gobblers broke off and you could tell he turned, he gobbled facing us, gobbled two or three times. 
and he got to about 100 yards. He was in these thick pines, but when he gobbled, you could tell that he was strutting, and he had to come out of strut and gobble because it was just that full, deep rattle. You could tell he'd been, been strutting right before he gobbled. Uh, at that point, he got quiet, but we knew he was so close, and we could tell he'd been strutting that we figured it wouldn't be long and he'd step out of that road, and sure enough, he did. You know, it's, it's always fun to see somebody shoot their first turkey, um, especially somebody who's thought about it and been around it enough. And Miss Cindy's definitely been around it. I mean, she's right here at the Jeb's facility a lot, and I'm sure Mr. Bobby and Trey and everybody are always talking about turkey hunting. And so um, she was clearly fired up about it, and she was nervous, and we were nervous for her. Um, but to see her have the opportunity, number one, was really exciting. But then number two, that bird came in, and I mean, he strutted. And man, when he spit and drummed right there in the decoys, it was so loud. I think all of us were just hearts pounding. And uh, I can only imagine she was nervous. And he got behind that decoy, and I think she thought she had a clear shot. Uh, but I think my favorite part about it was just when she shot, she shot right through that decoy. <laughs> You know, Dylan's back there, it's killing him because it's not the perfect footage. But I was telling him later, you know, man, there's, there's no better piece of footage to better explain somebody's first turkey hunt than that right there. I mean, turkey came in, did the deal. She thought she had a clear shot. She took a clear shot, she killed the bird. And I mean, that's really special. You just, you just don't get a lot of those textbook roost hunts on somebody's first bird when you kind of need it all to line up and, and it did. Well, baby, we'll have to buy them a new decoy. We don't, these don't have to float. Oh, okay. <laughs> There's a lot of really cool things I've been blessed to experience as a result of the call business. But maybe king over all those experiences has been the friendships, the relationships with people in the industry, solid folks like the Sears family who welcomed us with gracious hospitality, fed us like kings, and built us turkey guns that outperformed anything available on the market. Sometimes I reflect on just what a blessing this industry and these relationships have been to me and to my family. And I'm left with a tremendous feeling of gratitude. So to all my friends in Hazelhurst, thank you for your commitment to the development of exceptional products. And thank you for your partnership in all things Rolling Thunder.